Hello and welcome to another edition of Educated Parenting. I'm your host, Adrian Watson Carver, and with me today is Dr. Francis Bond. We'll be talking about creating a delicate balance of leisure and learning for students during the summer. The first weeks of summer usually begin with excitement and anticipation about how the summer will progress. But as we go along, I, as many other parents, worry about our children spending way too much time watching television, playing video games, or being held captive by the computer. Achieving a balance between leisure and learning for our students during their summer holiday is very important. Wouldn't you agree with that, Francis? I certainly do. This is so true. It's important for parents to incorporate a variety of learning activities throughout a student's summer schedule. Students' minds should be stimulated through educational activities and their physical exercises extended during the summer months. Studies confirm that during the summer months, all students experience learning losses if they don't engage in educational activities. Research shows that on the average, a student may lose approximately 2.6 months of grade level equivalency in mathematical computational skills. And one study that I read reported that two thirds of the academic achievement gap in reading and language found among high school students was attributed to the learning loss that occurred during the summer months of their primary school years. This is important information for parents and grandparents to keep in mind as they plan for their students' summer activities. I mentioned grandparents, Adrian, because they can benefit from this information too. In Maryland, more than 45,000 grandparents are raising their grandchildren and meeting their basic daily needs. And of course, during the summer, this number increases significantly when even more grandparents are providing child teen care on a daily basis. Wow, Fran, that's an awful lot of grandparents being involved. It certainly is. Today, we are excited because we have Mary Mercer, Supervisor of Parent Support Services in the Offices of Professional Development for Baltimore County Public Schools. And she's going to share a wealth of information on how we can integrate learning and activities during the summer that will help our children to grow. Welcome, Mary, and thank you for being here. I'm sure you have a wealth of information that you can share with our parents on how they can integrate summer learning and fun activities. I have three children myself, and though we already have the summer planned, I would love to hear more suggestions on what I could do. You are so right, Adrian. Many parents begin planning for their students' summer programs in February, but as you said, Sometimes things don't work out with the best laid plans. So I do have a few suggestions for you to help you throughout the summer. Let me begin by telling you about several educational opportunities for students. On our website at www.bcps.org, just click on that parents and family website scroll down and you'll get a storehouse of information about our summer programs. On that website, you'll find out valuable information about various summer camps that we're holding. Specifically, we're having a music festival camp that's going to be held this summer, as well as an instrumental, it's going to be an instrumental music festival camp and students who are currently enrolled in our instrumental, pro instrumental music programs in Baltimore County will be able to participate in this program. We also have an arts camp going on this summer, which will help our students tremendously in building art portfolios as well. I am so excited by, about a cyber camp mm. that we're having from the Office of Information, from, from the Office of Career and Technology this summer as well. They're going to feature robotics, they're mm. going to feature all kinds of galaxy information. Wow. It is going to be so exciting for our students. More information about camps 
we we extrapolate information from the Baltimore Child's Magazine every year, which comes out in February, and it has an extensive grid of information about summer camps. It has so much information. They even have a manners camp going oh. on in the summer. So you can get a menu of all kinds of things to do for your children if you need to do more planning. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. You know, Mary, um, reading is so critical for a child's success in school. And during the regular school year, we say you know, to parents they should be reading to their children, and we should say to children they should be reading more books. Well, how can we then ensure that this reading success continues in the summer so that the children do not lose their reading skills or their comprehension skills? What kinds of things are there for pa parent literacy? Well, Fran, that's a great question because we partner with the Baltimore County Public Library and during the summer they have a great summer reading oh, program. Wonderful. And the program is for families. Mm -hmm. So we have something with, for all children and parents during the summer. It's a summer reading program that you can go online, get information from the Baltimore County Public Library, or you can actually visit uh, the library mm -hmm. to register for this program. You can register beginning June 11 oh. through August 11. Oh, wonderful. This program even has something for birth to five. Oh, that's so it awesome. starts at the very beginning. Oh. And you can go to that program because it is an extensive program for family literacy. Oh, and that's so important, that reading to continue that. Wow, Mary, you have offered our parents so wow. much information. We'll be able to visit the library, and that's something specific that I plan to do with my children. We're going to take a short break right now, and when we come back, we'll be talking about what parents and grandparents can do at home to prompt learning during the summer. In addition, we'll give you our tip for the day, so don't go away. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When I was younger, I didn't want to admit I had a serious disease. Because of my diabetes, I lost the sight in my left eye. Misconceptions continue to surround this monster public health issue, but the simple truth is, diabetes can often be prevented and complications avoided. You're not alone. Understand the realities of diabetes and know that you can manage it and lead a full, active life. Welcome back. Francis and I are here with Mary Maser, who's been talking with us about summer programs for students. Mary, you talked to us about how we can balance leisure and learning and about different programs that are available for students. Now talk to us about what parents and grandparents can actually do at home to engage their children in learning. Well, Adrian, we encourage parents to do activities with their children that are fun, and that can also be challenging and educational. I always suggest that parents do a menu of things. One, we've already talked about reading. Reading is so important. Mm. Visit the local library. Make sure that you, your child reads anywhere from four to five books during the summer. Another tip is to use math. Math should be used daily. It's a skill that has to be practiced. And we have a great math site. It's called Cool Math, and that's exactly what it is, Cool Math. It's also called the Amusement Park of Math. So make sure you visit that website and get some cool math skills for your kids during the summer. It's important that children write during the summer. So get a pen pal. You can go on the website again. There's a site titled epals.com. Okay. They can also write to friends and relatives if you do not want to mm. go on the website for that. It's important that our children have physical activity. It is so important that they exercise. They exercise every day. It's so important. It helps stimulate their learning and thinking process as well. And then make sure that your children do some good deeds. 
do something mm -hmm. with them in the community so that they can yes. give back. Take them to visit That's the elderly. Make sure that the elderly are hydrated during the summer. This is so important. And then the great things that they can do on field trips and tours. Mm -hmm. Baltimore has so many museums. It has the aquarium. It has the zoo. It has so many interesting places to visit. And then just 40 miles away, we have Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. They can visit the Smithsonian. They can visit the White House. They can visit consulates in D.C. There's so much going on. So make sure you put that balanced menu in with them again for leisure and learning. Mm. Thank Great you ideas. so much, Mary. Wow, oh. you have given our parents and our grandparents right. and our students so much to think about and so much to look forward to for great opportunities to balance leisure and learning mm. this summer. Now, Francis and I would like to share with you our tip for the day. Our tip of the day centers on healthy snacks. During the summer, snacks are a big part of a student's diet, and snacks can make a positive or negative contribution to children's diets, depending on the choices that we offer them. Preparing healthy snacks in the summer is especially important because it provides good nutrition for growth and development, but it also supports lifelong healthy eating habits, which are so important. Healthy snacks include fruits, vegetables, grains, and low-fat dairy products. Fruits and vegetables during the summer are perfect snacks. Try new fruits or vegetables that maybe you haven't tried with your children before. Serve them whole or cut in half, in cubed or wedges. It just makes it more fun. Place them in individual plastic bags and children can grab a bag on the go and enjoy their snack. Use fruits in their salads, make fruit juice popsicles, mm. homemade smoothies, things like that. Vegetables can be served in dips with hummus or salad dressing or in pockets of whole wheat pita. Include whole grains that are low in fats and sugars. Healthy whole wheat options can include English muffins, it can include pita, tortillas, crackers, rice cakes, pretzels, and granola or even granola bars. Be sure to read the nutrition label so that you can understand things that are low in sugar, saturated fats, and trans fat. Include low-fat dairy products and student snacks as well. Offer low-fat cheese cut in small portions, yogurt, and low-fat pudding. Water should always be the main drink served with our kids during snack time. Making snacks together can be a great learning experience and lots of fun. Try making crunchy bananas together. You can peel and cut bananas in half, dip them in orange juice, then roll them in a baking pan filled with crushed whole grain cereal. Put it in the freezer for a couple of minutes and bam, you can enjoy a homemade nutritious snack that's crunchy and fun. Before leaving today, we would like to thank Mary for joining us today and sharing all that information for our parents, our grandparents, and our students to get ready for a wonderful summer full of learning. We'll be back in the fall with a new edition of Educated Parenting. In our next program, we'll be looking ahead to a new school year. I'm Frances Bond. And I'm your host, Adrian Watson Carver. Bye for now. We'll see you next time.